So we're talking about growth, and for each of you, I'd, I'd simply ask, and we'll start at the end of the table, uh, what kinds of things do you find the biggest challenges for companies who are thinking about growth as they contemplate it? What are they challenged by? What do they find a hard time getting their arms around? Where do they most need help from you, guidance from you, and focusing from you in making those decisions about growth? I think the uh, first thing is, again, in the planning process, if, if they haven't planned for the cash flow implications of, of any site sort of expansion, um, you know, the worst case scenario is um, you're in an expansion situation and you're, you're taking away from your core business because you're trying to fund the expansion from the core business. And, and that's a recipe for disaster. And, and cash flow mismanagement is, is really the number one reason why, why businesses fail. So to have a real good cash management or cash flow management system in place to, to really understand what, what are the funding areas, what are the needs of the expansion, and, and where are the areas when you may have a cash shortfall? Where can you, where can you, you know, access financing to help, you know, gap, you know, provide financing for those gaps. But, you know, to me, again, it all goes back to the planning. Once you understand what you're trying to achieve, is it, is it short-term goals? Is it, is it, is it medium-term financing that necessary? Is it long-term financing? And then we can, you know, talk about, you know, the complexion of each of those and, and what we might be, be able to offer in a financing package. Dave, how about your perspective on that question? Well, what until you're playing it safely in the air, you're gonna wanna have a uh, monthly budget, and you're, you're going to definitely want to uh, monitor that budget um, as closely as you can and see if there's been any deviations to that budget. Uh, because uh, not, not just with, in regards to startup businesses, but businesses that are undergoing a, a substantial s expansion, those are the businesses that fail the most in the first couple of years. So in order to uh, make sure that you're you're playing it safely in the air, you're going to want to have a game plan before you leave the ground, and you're going to want to have a monitoring system to go back and look at that, at, at least on a, a monthly, if not a weekly basis, to make sure that you're not deviating from that plan, and if you are, you better have good reason to do so. Thank you. Ann? I'm not a money person. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we basically are marketers. I mean, we help you market your products. So. And, and what I find sometimes fascinating and very saddening is that a company will come to us and say, you know, we want to be in this market. And I'll say, well, okay, I'm, a, I'm kind of a generalist. I don't know your product. Help me figure out who it is that your customer is. And they can't tell me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, there's this great opportunity with, with exports, with, with our agency, that you'll never get in the U.S. is that, you know, if you couple, it comes to me and says, I want to do business with GKN in, in Redditch, UK. I will get a contact there and I'll bring them there. That's nothing, you know, you can't, no one's going to bring you to someplace in, in Ohio. So, but knowing what your goal is on your customer, knowing who that customer is and having a strategy to get into the customer, because that's our, our thing is growing by making more sales. And I'm always amazed that companies aren't that focused and really, will not sit down and Google stuff. I mean, they're like, well, how are you gonna figure that out, Ann? I was like, I'm gonna Google it tonight when I get home. Oh, oh, I said, and you're gonna have to hope that I get it right, because I don't really know exactly what you do. So really focusing on what the customer is you're trying to get to, and looking for people who can help you find that route. This notion that you've described is one that I hear a lot from my colleagues who work with entrepreneurial companies, and it's the challenge of being sure that the principal running the company actually knows what their customers want and need. And the question of Googling it, the question of going and asking the customer, the question of validating your beliefs and expectations is so fundamentally important to being sure that you're heading down the right path and not the wrong path. It's the classic assumption that some business owners make that I've got the great idea, if I do this, it will work but they don't test that belief. Wendy, what do you find in your um, working with companies? I would just expand Anne's definition of customer to once again include the internal customer. So 
the same kind of reaction that I have is and when I'm working with family owners is understand who your family is, understand where other owners are, what is their risk for tolerance, what is their risk tolerance, what is their tolerance for ambiguity as, the, as you move forward and expand. Does everyone understand the plan for expansion and what that means to the family? And what are the risks involved? Uh, I think that's all very critical. Um, so who is your customer? If you think about that broadly in the three circles of the family, the business, and the ownership, I would encourage you all to do that because you have those internal customers. Do your employees understand? why you're going a certain route and what it means to them. What is the impact? Do they understand the customer uh, when you're going domestically, even domestically in other parts of our country? Um, I work with family businesses across the US and seeing the regional differences, um, as <clears throat> excuse me, as well as internationally. Can you give an example of a regional difference that sort of stands out? I think one is definitely related to, uh, I was working with a controlling owner, which is the first generation of owners uh, recently in the uh, Northwest region. And actually he had expanded internationally as well as domestically. And one of the issues that he brought up within his operating businesses uh, was the fact that he didn't realize that many of his employees were taking off uh, a certain holiday, religious holiday, and, and finally his HR got together and said, why are all these people just not showing up? What are we doing here wrong? And we, un we need to understand the various religious holidays that these people are taking, whether or not we're condoning it, let's give it to them and just assume that from now on these are the holidays. So that's not really domestic, but it was um, related to cultural differences even within our own country. I, mean, I understand some parts of the country, the first day of hunting season is that holiday. That's right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Where are we with respect to digital media and social networks and all of the other current cutting edge technologies that especially the younger people, but everyone is using today? How big a factor is that and what does it create as a problem or an opportunity? Yeah. Um, actually, in our agency, we really recognized it as as the way to market, and we run um, what we call digital strategy uh, workshops, and we had uh, a few of them just last month. We had about 300 people that came into these of our clients because it is vital. I mean, understanding your digital strategy under you know what does your website look like and the social media. Um, you know, how does that attract people? I mean, and ours are very focused on that international side. Uh, but we have a whole service where we will do an analysis of your website and your digital strategies and report back. Um, and that's one of the things that, that we do at Commerce. I, I don't think you do it in SBA. We do do it, but not directly. We have our partners help us out with that, with SCORE and the Small Business Development Center. We'll help people learn how to digitally market, market their products and their business, uh, either it's B2B or just to the general public. So yeah, we do have support in that realm, but we have our partners help out the small business owners. And it's important that you know those resources are out there, whether it's the Women's Business Centers, which are the three of them, the Small Business Development Center, which is housed with you, our folks here at UConn, or SCORE, who are, I mentioned earlier, that are, that are volunteers. The question has to do with, in the digital economy, uh, how do you focus on the kinds of changes and actions you need to take to take advantage of what the digital opportunities provide? Is that fair? Yeah, I would say, I mean, from the you know, digital perspective, it's, it's not something that we, we finance, but from a planning perspective, um, you know, the whole digital age, it creates a new distribution channel. You've got online. Um, you know, online stores, online selling, and you know, that's one aspect of it. So I think you know, a company needs to understand when they're looking to grow internationally, how are they going to go to market internationally? Is, is one part of that strategy going to be digital online sales, or are they going to be working through direct sales agents overseas, distribution, or maybe a joint venture agreement? Um, so those are different ways that they can go to market. I think with the digital age, what's also interesting from the planning process is now you can look at who are my competitors? Who are my competitors here in the US, Europe, or wherever? 
and you can look at their websites and understand more about their product and how they go to market and what's their digital strategies. And you can kind of take all this information and put it into your own plan. So it's, it's really important, not only from a distribution perspective, but also from, I think, a research and planning perspective. Other perspectives, Wendy? Uh, I have several family businesses that I've worked with and done research with, and uh, one of their values primarily is they excel in customer service. So I just want to remark it's uh, that when they're using digital experience and when they're integrating these values of family into that digital experience, it's remarkable how far they go to provide that service, customer service orientation, to keep that branding piece of their, of their family business alive and continued in that digital realm. So that's been fascinating to me to watch as they expand. I mean, this administration has really picked up on that. I mean, the first one of the first things we saw, you know, two years ago, uh, were some of the appointees that started our our e what called e-commerce lab to help companies grow internationally because digital was so important. Um, and we we've spent a lot of resources on it, and it's paid off. I mean, the the companies that we've worked with have really done well um, by getting involved in that. And unfortunately, um, I don't think the states have done a good job to help domestic companies do that. Um, I was just in the UK working on a, on a project with our ambassador in the midst of getting tariff wars going. But uh, <laughs> I was talking to um, their, their equivalent to us. And what they're doing locally with companies is just phenomenal with that kind of stuff. And, and we don't see it here. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, uh, but we don't see it in in our state agencies doing that kind of training. Um, I know you say there's score and stuff, but but real organized professional training, and that's that would be great. That's a great thing that I hope the next governor will put into DECD. Thank you, and that raises an interesting question. Yeah, but you have one first, please. Yeah, uh, so Wendy, have you ever worked with a family, older owners and new newbies kind of coming in? Generation. The newbies are very, Younger are very comfortable with technology and have a lot of ideas, and the older ones are scared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, do you, yeah. how do you work with that? In terms of that? Well, it's interesting that you asked that question. I was just uh, facilitating an education committee meeting for a family that had set up as part of their family council. They have an education committee, and it's intergenerational. And so one of their ideas at, for their family reunion was to have a book club. And we were talking about book selection and what they were going to talk about. And the next generation member said, forget the book. Let's just do TED Talks. So here's an example. And everyone agreed, said, OK, here's, it's, it's, a, it's a benign, small example. But when you think about the issues that come up between intergenerations and how do they communicate, how do you communicate to the rising generation? What kind of latitude do you give them to express their ideas? And similar to an e-commerce lab, I've seen family businesses actually set up idea labs in which they have family meetings. And as part of that family meeting, they will have the next generation present ideas about the business. And many of them are very good. And they're, they're cutting edge. And, and it serves everyone well for both generations to come to the table and make room for their voices. Thank you.